Many of you may have read that the former Canadian supermodel Linda Evangelista has filed a $50 million lawsuit against Zeltic in New York last week. Her claim is reportedly for negligence, misleading advertising and failure to warn customers such as her about the potential side effects of the procedure. The procedure is called Cool Sculpting, which essentially seeks to freeze fat cells so that they die and then the body gets rid of them, thus eliminating fat from a very localised area of the body. But in some rare cases there was a side effect called paradoxical adipose hyperplasia or PAH. And what essentially happens is that the body regrows fat cells but in a harder form than they were before, usually in the area where the patient had the treatment and often in the shape of the device that was used to get rid of the cells in the first place. So in claims like this that involve negligence there are several steps that must be established and the first of which is to establish a duty of care, which is not essentially all that difficult. For example, if you go out in your car, you have a duty of care to other road users. If you invite someone to your house, then you have a duty to make sure they are safe. And it was the Capro Industries case from 1990 that sets out a test to establish whether or not there's a duty of care owed to another person. The first question that should be asked is whether or not the damage should be foreseeable in those circumstances. Secondly, whether there is a sufficient proximate relationship, in other words, there is some kind of relationship between the two parties that establishes that duty of care. For example, if party A has a contract with party B, then there may well be a duty of care between them. But if party B is dealing on some level with party C, then there is unlikely to be a duty of care between A and C, unless there is something that links the two and creates this proximate relationship. And thirdly, that it must be fair, just and reasonable in all the circumstances to impose a duty of care. In the case of Linda Evangelista, of course there was a duty of care because she was undergoing cosmetic treatments. The second element when talking about negligence is whether or not there has been a breach of that duty of care. And essentially what a duty of care means is that the person, or indeed organisation, has a duty at common law to take reasonable care in what they are doing. This is a purely objective test rather than a subjective test. This means that it takes account of what a reasonable person, or man in the street that you might refer to, would think of as a reasonable standard of care in that situation. But it is not a subjective test because it doesn't alter depending on the defendant's own circumstances or characteristics. The next step is to assess whether or not there has been a breach of this duty of care, which is usually relatively straightforward. It just means whether the person, or indeed the organisation, has breached that duty of care. In other words, they have failed to act with reasonable care, as was their duty. And in assessing this, there are no variants or degrees. Either reasonable care has been taken, or it has not. And if it has not, then there is a breach of the duty of care. And having established a breach of duty of care, the final element for negligence is whether or not that breach has caused the loss that is claimed. In other words, the claimant must prove and establish that the defendant's breach of that duty of care was responsible for any loss that is claimed. And for this, we use what we refer to as the but for test. But for this, that wouldn't have happened. So but for the defendant's breach of the duty of care, the loss would not have occurred. There are two common ways that a claim will often fail at this initial stage. First of all, if it can be demonstrated that the claimant would have suffered that loss regardless of whether the defendant breached the duty of care or not. And secondly, if there was something else happened that in fact caused the claimant's loss, then the defendant will not be held to be liable for it. In the situation where there's more than one thing going on at once, and it could be said that the defendant was negligent and responsible, but perhaps there was some other intervening aspect as well, a court would need to decide whether or not there was a break in the chain of causation. Causation being did the negligence cause the loss? Or was there something else intervening that happened that actually means that the defendant should not be responsible? But even then, just to show how complicated these situations can be, whilst it is necessary for the claimant to show that but for the negligence the loss wouldn't have occurred, that by itself is not sufficient because some circumstances will still mean that the defendant will not be liable. The best example of this is a case from 1996 involving a mountaineer who was going on a very difficult climb but concerned about his knee. He went to see a doctor who negligently dismissed his knee concerns as being trivial and nothing to worry about. The mountaineer continued onto the expedition, believing that his knee was fine, which he would not have done had the doctor noticed that there was a problem with his knee. 
The Mountaineer then suffered an injury which was entirely foreseeable as a result of the climbing. So on analysis, whilst it is true that but for the doctor's negligence, the Mountaineer would not have gone on the expedition, therefore would not have been injured, the doctor is not liable to the injury because he bore no legal responsibility because that was outside of the scope of his duty at that time. So if one can establish that the negligence was the direct cause of the injuries and it was within the scope of the duty, and as a result, the person has had a loss of income for a period of time that was reasonable, then this can be part of the claim for negligence. In the case of Linda Evangelista, she is indeed claiming for lost income and emotional distress because essentially she hasn't been able to work as a model since 2016, she says as a result of the procedures. Other types of claims for clinical or medical negligence can include the failure to correctly diagnose a condition, over-medication, under-medication, incorrect treatment, negligence in relation to surgery, negligence in relation to psychiatric or other care, and injuries perhaps sustained during pregnancy or birth. The list, as you can imagine, is extensive. So it is essential that you take formal legal advice if you are in any position where you believe that there may have been some negligence, which has caused injury, suffering, and of course, some loss. So I hope you found that brief overview useful. Please give the video a thumbs up and remember, stay humble and subscribe.